This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. This week, we are discussing Divided Allegiance, the second book in the Deed of Pax Narian. In this book, Pax breaks off from the company and makes friends and enemies all on her own. Hi, I'm Nicole. And I'm Robin. And welcome to Books That Burn, where today we are discussing Divided Allegiance, book two of the Deed of Pax Narian by Elizabeth Moon. For our factions, we have Pax Narian, we have uh, the goddess Arachia and her followers, uh, we don't literally have the goddess, most of the followers. We have the Order of Gerd, um, priests and uh, members of the Grange. We have the Kuekgan, Master Okalo, dwarves, elves, and gnomes. We have the Paladin Master, Ambirian, and other various paladins. We have Paxinarian's horses, Socks and Star. So, speaking of horses, yes, we're actually talking As- about one of those horses for our minor character. So I we think- should always do this i think this is should should always what talk about the horses yes but that implies that every horse undergoes trauma in every book uh never mind maybe not for this podcast (laughs) um uh so yeah like that's not a good thing so i think this is actually our first it's our first actual like animal animal it's our it's our first non-anthropomorphic animal non-magical non-magical non-talking yeah Socks is just a regular horse. Socks is just a pony. Well, I think it's a horse, not a pony. But anyway, it's not like how you can call all doggos puppers. It's not the same thing. <laughs> it's a different species. Uh, at least it's, different it's enough. It's so tempting to be wildly incorrect with how to refer to horses this whole segment. Please don't. <laughs> it's going to okay. bother me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, so we have socks and he's named because he has white stockings and a blaze if you don't know horse things i was gonna say do you know the correct term for that that particular marking set on the horse yeah oh well no not not as a group no oh okay never mind i just (laughs) he has white stockings and he has a blaze that means he he has um, a thing on his forehead. It's probably white, but they don't say. But usually that's what I that means, they, is that he's got... Do they not say? I, don't, I was under the impression that they did specifically say white stockings, I don't white if, forehead. Or- yeah, I think it was like white stockings and a blaze. Anyway, blaze usually means that it's white. My horse knowledge is mostly in the, like, fanboy of horses type of knowledge. Uh, but anyway... Um, this is not a horse podcast, so this is not a horse podcast, so we're fine. Okay, so uh, socks has wounds from his last owner, and he kicks anyone who tries to touch his feet, especially his hind feet. And and it's it's more than it's more than just kicking. Like the kicking is the extreme. Hey, don't touch that reaction. Mm-hmm. But really. He has issues with people feeding him and getting too close, with people walking around him, with mm-hmm. being groomed, like brushed at all. Yeah, like the there's a there's a conversation between Pax and between Siri, who works as the stable hand, and she Siri basically says like I tried to couldn't I couldn't even get near him, and like it was impressive to her that Pax could even could even like rub down his back or brush his back at all speaking of which uh pax was magically compelling him at the start of their relationship she had a magic ring that let her calm him and even though she wasn't a bad person really 
on the whole, she's not a bad person. And so it worked in, out okay in the ra- for him, in the realm but of, he still of was being D&D-esque. madly compelled and controlled. Yeah, in the realm of D&D-esque, nothing about her personal alignment and decisions is anywhere yeah. near evil, however. Right. But also she meets him after having used the ring to uh, hold still a creature while it could be killed. Now, yeah. how bad she feels about that, that's later for talking about Pax, if we ever yeah. decide to talk about that. But as it relates to the ring, yeah, it, it shows that she isn't using this ring to hurt him, but she could have been. And his most recent owner... Uh, right before Pax died of being a bully who didn't want to pay his bill, uh, the bill about socks, actually, um, because he was so hard to shoe because he had previously been injured. And we don't know if it was this, the person who, um, who most recently owned him or not, but someone Wait, wounded. Oh, what? You- we don't, the rest of my sentence is, but someone wounded his feet. Someone uh, wounded his fat locks. We we don't. I mean, there's pretty. It's it's not like it's not like it's not text, unreasonable to think it was that person. Oh, it is. It is set up in the book to make it to make it say like, no, this is the person who did all of these things. Yeah, and this person like had him in a spiked bit. Like, yeah. Um, I was just saying that like in the long life of horses, it is possible that it was someone else who caused the initial injury, but, but again, we don't have it enough doesn't matter information. Narratively. Like there's yeah. nothing there's nothing that even that doesn't even matter with Yeah. Like the the thing that so the thing that he that this pony kind or this horse I'm gonna keep calling him a pony. It's not a pony. I think they don't I think they use I think in the book Pax uses pony to refer to horses anyway. Sometimes. Like, she calls Star a good pony, but I think Star's actually a pony. That's why I'm not worried about it. But Sox is <laughs> definitely not a pony. Um, yeah, so the it's it's interesting that... So the ring doesn't... It, it, it doesn't calm him down, actually. That's a, no. that's a really good thing to, to talk about. Mm-hmm. The ring is a compulsion, and she can order him to do something, and she can encourage him, and she can kind of mind speak to him, essentially. So it's not that she can magically calm him, but she can mm-hmm. tell him in a way that he will understand and will obey to hold still or not kick or come to her or leave or... And, and, and I think that that's important because mm-hmm. this, this ring is not like a magical, um. It doesn't make him feel better. It just makes him behave. Right. Which, which in the context of, of abuse and of trauma is, is actually something, it, it, it puts a different flavor on it because if she was giving him like the, I don't know, just do horses have serotonin with their happy chemical? Um, I don't know that they don't. I have no idea. Would middle school you have known? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. But it, it's not that he... I can spot a strawberry around like that, though. Um, <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> no. Thank you. So he... The the ring is is a compulsion, but it's a compulsion that the animal is aware is happening to them. And mm-hmm. there's a couple different written out pieces where we kind of get stars... Um, or I'm sorry, Sox's, we get Sox's, uh, like, description of his response to her. Like, there's at one point where he's going to, I don't remember if he's gonna kick, or if he was trying to bolt, or there there was something where- It sucks, he was probably gonna kick. Probably. Uh, but there's this particular moment where she tells him to stay, and basically holds him physically still, because otherwise he would have injured- somebody else and probably also himself to be fair and even though that is for his his own safety and other people's safety he is he he's he stands there but he is quivering shaking because he's not calm he's just being held and even before the ring is ever used on him we have explicitly in the text again when the snowcat gets killed um that it does, we, we have it very viscerally shown that it does not change their minds, it just moves their bodies. Oh, yeah. 
It, it is um, a literal compulsion. Yeah, and so we go into this with it explicit in the text that just because he's behaving doesn't mean that he feels any better or is calmer. Now, because Pax is taking good care of him mm-hmm. and is showing in other ways that he can trust her, eventually he does calm down, and then yeah. when she gives away the ring, then they have enough trust to keep going forward. Yeah. It's very much an instance of, like, this was necessary to kind of... It, it's almost it's almost a situation where, like, like with this horse... Like, she almost needed... She almost needed this thing to let... To even to, like, hold him there and keep him safe long enough for him to see that she wasn't going to hurt him and for him to, you know, to, to kind of go through the experience of, like her throwing away the bit that hurts his mouth and Mm -hmm. putting in something that feels better and her being the person who takes him to um the uh master okalo the kuakan Mm -hmm. and and getting some healing some physical healing for him and her being the person who rides him every day and then takes care of him and doesn't just leave him dirty and gross and and he and there needed to be and, and there, it's actually exp- kind of explicitly said, but said by another character, said by the Kuakan. Mm-hmm. Bosom, are you knocking my stuff off, or are you just rubbing on the dresser? Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, it, It's explicitly kind of said by the Kuakan that she probably could have accomplished everything that she did with him, even without the ring, just because she is, she's, like, she's not faking it with him. She's legitimately kind and caring and taking care of him, and so- you know, like Robin said, when she gave away the ring, it didn't impair that at all. It just right. meant that now he was trusting her for real instead of holding still because she wanted him to. And so it was totally possible that she could just have accomplished everything that she did anyway. It would just probably have taken a lot longer, but it was totally doable. But the thing with the ring is that it 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 shortened it. It shortened it, but it shortened it because it was forcing him to cooperate with her at first. and So then from the perspective of Sox being traumatized, it ended up working out okay. Something something else with... Because we've, we've talked a lot currently about uh, Pax's treatment of Sox. We haven't really talked about like the implications of his treatment before. Mm-hmm. So without summarizing without summarizing story sure uh he has uh, a a collection of in- of injuries and a collection of scars long term mm-hmm. scars like this is not this is not like somebody hurt his ankles and he has fresh wounds like he has deep embedded scars in his hocks mm-hmm. and across his flanks i think too a little bit there's like scarring it's not just at his hooves and he has like scars in his mouth from from a spiked bit. Yeah, and I think there's there's something else too. Yeah, and also like he had training that seemed like just for war horses and like like be able to like spin on like a dime in one direction. And to me it seems stuff that's like super fancy but not super useful, but if you're trying to just like impress people with your fancy horse it'll impress people and just the whole shape of it makes it seem like he was being hurt and controlled by people who weren't worried about his welfare or what training would be good for him. Yeah, and you had you had actually put this even more explicitly when we had kind of pre-talked about what we were going to say. Mm-hmm. Um you had said that it it seemed like he was he w- he had been trained uh for specifically to to show him off and to display him. And oh, to yeah. look fancy and not be utilitarian, right. and that phrase kind of stuck out to me, mm-hmm. especially yeah, because definitely to- especially because he has like physical injuries that you can see, mm-hmm. and there's this there's this like narrative almost like clashing juxtaposition where you have this horse that was trained to be pretty but physically has very ugly scars, yeah from the treatment to get him there. And, and there's, and the thing is like Pac starts working with him. And after a while, once he trusts her and once they're working together, this horse does not have like any quote unquote innate tendencies that would have, that, you know, that somebody could have used to, to justify or attempt to justify 
this treatment of him like no he's he doesn't do anything that would have been an excuse that someone could have you tried to use he just is you know very forcefully saying stop touching my feet they hurt but i'm saying like like that's that's not even like i don't even think that's part of it because I, i'm saying that like because that's a, that's the thing with an injury but i'm saying like before he had that that physical mistreatment well, no, that's what I'm saying is that the only the most violent thing he does is say, stop poking my scars. Oh, yeah, and of yeah, course, yeah. he says that si- before people get to actually poking them because he's right. very hurt and very preventative. But that's the only mean thing he does is say that hurts. Don't do that. And that's right. And once you make that not hurt. Yeah, he's 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 just this high spirit high spirited <laughs> yeah he's a, he's a very energetic jumpy bouncy and not jumpy but like energetic prancy bouncy horse mm-hmm. but like he's he's yeah like, it definitely points to it all being from him being hurt for yeah. no reason yeah and and, and not yeah. saying that there's a reason to have hurt him but you know it's from it from a a narrative abuser's perspective there isn't even like a, a a written in thing that they could have they could have been like well like the, the horse made me do it like there's nothing that could have even yeah. been used that way and that that I feel like that makes it that puts a a a, a different flavor on it like this is not an an owner desperate to control an animal and and doing things that are awful and and feeling pushed into it like there's nothing like that this is just somebody who yeah. looked at a who looked at a horse and said you know what. I just feel like hurting you today. <laughs> and Spiked bit, spin on command, gonna use spurs, let's go. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna use spurs, we're gonna... What did they do to the... Do you know what they did to get scars like that on the... in the At the ankles? In the back legs? I have no idea. Okay. I, That's probably I mean, a good if thing. He was, yeah, I, I have no idea. All right, moving on to Pax, fighting for the webmistress's servants. That's a weird word to say. That's um, a very weird word. So this is a whole, we're going to, I'm just going to go ahead and and say up front that if if we end up needing more explicit content warnings, those are, pro- you've already seen those in our, um, our, our description of the episode, but we are talking about some pretty graphic violence and that might come up in our discussion so Mm -hmm. this is an extra added heads up for that yeah though i i would say on the level of physical violence portrayed in books we'll get to it in the wrap-up but i would push back on this having been super graphic oh no um, i'm not saying the book was graphic i'm saying oh, we might be graphic yeah big difference um okay <laughs> all right so uh i don't know like the most to me the most like torturous part of this other than that she basically has to keep fighting and trying not to die is that the stuff they give her to keep her going doesn't slake her hunger or her thirst and it just She's just getting energy shots after she crashes. Like, that's really rough. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, no, that is what I wanted. Sorry. Um. Yeah. I, yeah, so she, uh, well, really? I mean. I mean, the sl- combined with the sleep deprivation. That's, yeah, like, yeah, me- physically, yeah. And and then mentally, she keeps trying to call to Gerd, um, even though she's not a Gerdsman. She keeps trying, and eventually she goes from trying to call for his help to just thanking him for letting her fight because she's just stuck on the like Gerd is a fighter, yeah, side of things. This is a this is a weird kind of so with with regards to with regards to this particular fantasy story it's, it's very unlike reality um where the gods that are believed are physical presences and a lot of them initially were human beings that were raised to godhood they weren't like some of our real life texts they were not god who came to earth 
they were a person who then was elevated. And so I say these Huh? I was going to say, these books are much different to read as an atheist now than when I was Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's way it's different. A bit, it's a whole different story um, yeah. from that lens. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so when she is calling out to Gerd, she is not calling to someone that she just believes exists. Like, she's calling to a person that she can look up in the history books and mm-hmm. and look up the history of this human being who then now has people who follow him after death. Like there are there are legitimate magical powers that are granted to to paladins of this order. Like this is not this is like not magically a question. getting a horse too. Right, exactly. Things like that. Like this is not a this is not a belief. This is a misunderstanding for her of mm-hmm. what he's about. Because when she's part of this is part of like the, the actual trauma that goes into this is where like she's calling out to Gerd, but Gerd is not just all about fighting. And in this context, that makes, that matters. Right. It's about, like, fighting justly and to help and, yeah. Yeah, it's about defending the people that need defending. It's not just about combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About about being someone who will put their body on the line to protect those who can't do that. Yeah. And also, when they finally let her go... She fights Let through a bunch go. of enemies. <laughs> yeah, when they when they finally release her, they put like a bunch of the kind of enemies that she has been fighting back to back with her companions, and she almost kills them. And the only reason that they don't kill her is because she manages to finally call out to Gerd after days of having tried. Well, that's such a like. <sighs> it feels a little Deus Ex Machina, like. It, well, oh, it's like more it than that. It finally worked. It's more than that because it's not just that it finally works. We have a. I feel I don't have my book in front of me, but there's a there's a thing I think where Ambrose goes up or, I think goes up and like commands her to stop in the name of Gerd, and we get like a we we get we get almost the set the there's enough setup on both sides where it, it seems like. He invoked Gerd so she could, re- and that let her reach Gerd. Like it's not as much DSX DS Machina as it is. Like I found the paragraph. Okay. Uh, no, she is thinking fight through to my friends by Gerd, and right. then she actually says in the name of Gerd. Uh, I'm looking before that to see if he says because there's there's a double description of that scene. There's the one from the party's view, and then there's the one. Oh no! Don't look before. Oh. Look after because oh, yes, when right, they're telling after. her what happened. Okay, I don't think I'll find that in time. Okay, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> All right, I I think th- I th- I'm pretty sure that that was part of. But from the description we hear on her side, it doesn't seem like she heard anybody call out to Gerd. Oh no, that's, that's not what I, I was that's finding. not what I'm saying. Like she doesn't she doesn't know that that's how. Okay. Uh, All right, but like from oh, a, from a magical that's why it was perspective, possible. yes, I'm saying like in the story, like the that's why she could reach him because somebody else had already invoked his presence in a in this stronghold of his enemy, in a yeah. healthy, accurate way, <laughs> instead right, of right. just a "help me kill this person" kind of way. Yeah. Um. Also, uh, the thing with the amped up scarring in her wounds, oh like all her. All of her wounds were made to heal, like, super, super fast. To heal. <laughs> well, they were made to close up they were and made, yeah. scar. <laughs> they were made to close and not get infected but and like, scar. They were not- for the rest of the book, they just hurt. Oh, my gosh. And that kind of low-level pain that just doesn't go away, that's so bad. And that's... I mean, we're talking about where she got that, but I just wanted to say that, like, it keeps going and it keeps hurting her. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, so... So there's, like, a whole lot of gaslighting, both in trying to get her to kill her companions and also in trying to make her fight, because it's what transforms it, where, like, she can't trust her food or water, and she... Oh the first gosh. time they try to feed her, she knows she shouldn't take it. And then when she does, she no longer is worried about it. And may yeah. I just say, it's the second time in this book 
that eating or drinking something has made her no longer be worried about whether she should do something. It's the second time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, That's a theme, mm-hmm. I, I want to say, in Elizabeth Moon's fantasy. Oh, yeah? Watch what you eat? <laughs> well, okay. Like, Not necessarily mad- watch what you eat, but like taking food or drink from your enemy is mm-hmm. a risky <laughs> maneuver and they do not have your best interests at heart and they will use right magical food or drink to to get what they want like i i i can't just pull up specific more specific examples than that but like I, sure. i'm pretty sure that that is also a thing in the prequels and i think it might happen or or it's thwarted an attempt it's but it's thwarted? definitely in in other part other yeah. bits of her writing i mean it was yeah. in it was in book one Mm-hmm. With the love potion, kind of. Oh yeah, wasn't thinking about that. With that, yeah, I, they, I don't think it's was... in her sci-fi, but also mm-hmm. that makes sense because yeah, you're not dealing with like yeah magic. It's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a thing. Be- like, don't take food and drink from from people who wish you harm. Yeah. So, I, I think that's interesting as a theme. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So I. Going back to to Pax, yes, I don't know what else to call it other than gaslighting, it because it's not an edit of past events that's happening, and I don't actually know if gaslighting has to be telling you that something was different in the past, or if it can be just lying to you with the purpose of changing your view in the moment i'm not actually sure it it definitely it definitely can be both because convincing someone that at any point what they thought happened isn't what happened it can either be no what you're seeing right now is wrong or i don't see it you must be crazy or it can be no you're not remembering that right because enough of no you're not remembering that right can really break someone down and Mm. they do both they do yeah. both to her they mess with her past memories they also they show how the elves did mess with her memory but the elves like yeah. did the errand she was supposed to do presumably and got her to do something else but because um the webmistress's servants were able to point that out i mean I don't think they were lying. They were taking advantage of this deception that had happened in order to gaslight her further. Okay, that makes sense. It, yeah. It's also like a... It's an interesting... From an academic standpoint. Um, mm-hmm. It's an interesting thing because they have physical coercion, magical coercion, and also gaslighting to make them more effective. Mm-hmm. Like phys- yeah, physical they're... coercion being the... Uh, you have to fight, you have to eat and drink our thing that doesn't help you, you can't sleep, or you'll die. That's yeah. the physical coercion. And then the magical coercion with the things that she drinks and with the armor that helps to gaslight her. And there's just like a lot put in there. But also, and we'll we'll talk about this in the wrap up, kind of like you had mentioned, like reading it as a as a as an audience member it's not super visceral. Right. Um, they even skip over large sections of time and it's like, well, oh, she yeah. kept going and here she gets a knife and here she gets armor. <laughs> like they, yeah. they skip a lot of it. Yeah. They had like, they had like some descriptions of her, like the first, like three or two or three battles, I think. And then they yeah. have kind of more of a description of like her quote unquote breaking out to her to go get her friends or whatever, but it's actually her fighting through and almost hitting them. Like they have a description of that. Yeah, but they and, they but literally I, say that sh- time blurred together, and so she wasn't sure, which meant that the audience doesn't have to go through it. And I I just think that that's it's a really good writing done. technique because if you're trying to make show how she doesn't feel like she knows how much time has passed, skipping over large sections of time, yeah, will do that. We'll to do your that audience to your reader, too. <laughs> and also saves them from experiencing what you went through. <laughs> exactly. Very nice. Very nicely done. Yeah. All right, now we have magical brain surgery. Uh, and Pax had asked 
before the surgery to be killed rather than lose the part of her that is a fighter. And so she loses control and they're disrespecting her autonomy. And uh, Nicole pointed out that this is yet another book with magical brain surgery. Getting we're, a theme here. We have a trend going. Yes. Yes. It's not intentional, we promise. And also, like, we do get to pick the traumas we talk about. Like, Right. Well, this <laughs> we have a little bit of ages. This one is super important to the to the actual book. This one is book. very important. And I had forgotten that this was the trauma in this book, and I had been bracing for the trauma that's in book three that we're definitely going to talk about. Uh, and so I was <laughs> oh, emotionally yeah. braced for an entirely different event and then got hit with this as the last, like, 50 <laughs> pages. And I was angry when I put the book down. Oh, was you like, are? What? Why did they do this? Like, why, I would, hate why did this, this happen to me? I hate this so much. I hate this kind of twist in this stage <laughs> of a story. I hate Act Three oh in my gosh. most movies with like people just like lying to each other, or and like this felt like that kind of thing, and it made me really mad. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh man. So I have very strong feelings about this, uh, <laughs> especially when she wanted to die rather than lose this part of her. And then they're just like, but you can stay here. You don't have to leave. And she's like, I'm literally terrified of all of you. Yeah, like they violated her trust and they violated her trust in a way that um, like they, they it's it's this really cool narrative thing. Yeah, because they. So she was con- so okay. The thing that they pulled out <laughs> um, wasn't like explicitly her courage, but it was connected to it. Mm-hmm. And so her courage and her her ability to just kind of shrug off things and keep going was kind of collateral damage. Also, when you do brain surgery without the ability to have brain scans, you're gonna mess something up. Well, and yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and also magic. Um, Not the same as literal surgery. Yeah. Which is weird, because it's both less and more precise. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because they're um, like, we are going to take out you being super angry and slowly having evil grow inside your skull. Right. Oh, but the anger makes you a good fighter. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. Well, it's, not, ju- it's not just the anger, I feel well, like. Well, no, but th- they're well, trying no, to get rid of the anger, and it's connected. That's true. Th- I mean, th- and the thing with it, too, is, like, because of the way that she was magically infected with this thing, it was explicitly tied to the combat that we talk about in part we talked about in part two. Mm-hmm. And so like it it's not it's not this unrelated like, oh, we're gonna take out the anger and that might kill your fighting instead. Like, no. They they knew that that might be collateral damage because of how it was done to her. Yeah. And but like before they made yeah. it try to seem like they would, you know, have as little of a change as possible and hopefully everything will be fine. And <laughs> she brings up, if I lose this, I would rather die. Yes. And, they and- didn't say, you might lose this. And then she said, oh, I'd rather die. No, she, she was aware. She was so terrified of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and once she's not, once she leaves because everyone just has a sword strapped to their body because it's a medieval setting. Oh, she uh, she had, like, I... Like, she was afraid of, like, knives, like, I think. I like, almost want to argue that she has, like, backlog PTSD. Right, because she's retroactively affa- afraid of every time she's been near a blade, and she's got all these memories that she can't square with how she feels now yeah. without the kind of transitional memories that you would normally get when you change as a person. Yeah. She went straight from being totally fine to totally not. And she's like, I don't know how I ever touched one of these things. Yeah. And no one will be okay with me because my body shows scars. Oh, like, there's just like a whole... Too. Yeah, there's a lot of layers to all of that. Mm-hmm. So even though they give her a letter of safe passage, she is so terrified of everyone that she can't even consistently show it to try and get help. So the little help they try to give her is very ineffective because they underestimate how terrified she is. Mm -hmm. And they keep acting like it's just going to come back. Like there's no aftercare. There's no follow up. They both assume that she's more competent than she is and deny her the autonomy to have known when she was in her right mind what she wanted done with her body, which was not to be in it if she was like this. 
going to yeah. keep coming back to that because it makes me very angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's awful. It's super bad. Um, oh, what's the? I'm trying to think of the. She like. I mean, and and and. and I think that really is kind of the awful part about this is it's it's it would be very different be a very different story if she and they both just didn't know what was going to happen and this was necessary I mean it, it was it was necessary for her to to have happen but like the consequences were not unforeseen right and and you know just I mean like you said like the fact that they the consequences were foreseen. She mm-hmm. said, this is what I want or don't want if this is true. And then after it happened, they looked at her and were like, nah, eh, They're like, oh, fine. we can't kill you. You're helpless. Like, and she's like, literally did not want to be helpless. Like, please put me out of my misery. And they're like, nah. But also, she's not going to bring it up again once she comes out of it because in oh, her no, current state- Oh, no, she is state, terrified. <laughs> right. She's terrified. She's not going to say, please kill me. Like, she can't even imagine having been in the state of mind where she'd rather die than be like this because she can't even understand her previous self like this. Mm-hmm. But this is the equivalent of, hey, there's cancer. Well, it's no, it's the equivalent of, hey, you have cancer in your leg, we're going to try and save your leg, but we're also going to get all of the cancer. Then you wake up from surgery and find out that they had to chop off your leg. And they basically look at you and say, okay, well, the stump is healing nicely. See ya. Yeah. And there's no there's no emotional support. There's no helping you get back on your feet. There's no helping you to function without a mm-hmm. leg. There's just, well, you lived. Cool. Right. That's healing like, yeah. really well and done. And- it, right, it's not that. not like you can't <laughs> live after, but she was very afraid of this very specific downside, and then it happened. Yeah, and because of the nature of the downside, she's now terrified by everything. <laughs> that really is like the thing that makes you, <laughs> yeah. Also, like when she went, like sh- there's a bit where like she goes to work for someone, and then that person throws her out because she couldn't defend the caravan. Oh, she she basically got fired for not doing her job because After she was hired, hired as a job. F- <laughs> that's no okay. That's true. That's fair. Yeah, she um, wasn't hired to defend. Yeah, she was defend. hired. She was hired as a civilian. She was fired for not being a soldier. A, as a soldier, yeah. And there's there, there's a lot of that where she like she does her job, but the other person doesn't care or doesn't like blah 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 or thinks that she should be different and then gets her in trouble or kicks her out or there's just a lot she goes through yeah essentially like the last part of the book just not functioning and not doing well and not eating and not sleeping and and being scared of everything and i think that it's it's also kind of interesting to look at it because she she's she's not like with all of this trauma and all of everything She's really having to learn how to be different, how to function differently. And that's hard. It's hard to kind of re-get to know yourself after trauma, but it is especially hard in her case to have to relearn who she is when that trauma happens within an instant with like, she goes to sleep, she has this thing, she wakes up and everything is different. And like, and I'm not saying that like... I'm not saying that it's harder or easier to figure out who you are after long term or short term trauma, but like there's an there's an there is an added element of this to the fact that this was this was an overnight change. Yeah. And Oh definitely. And it's yeah, it's just it's a lot to go through (laughs) essentially. Yeah. All right, for the wrap up, our gratuity rating for socks. I think it's a mix of backstory and off screen. Because yeah. even a lot of how it's talked about is Pax talking about him when he's not right there. Uh, okay, okay. Like we're not wa- we're not watching bad no, stuff happen. We're watching, we're watching we're current watching healing owner talk about happened to him. Right, healing from okay. the trauma and talking about what it mm-hmm. was. Um, that's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me see. Not even mild because no, Pax it's is just... hurting him. So, oh Ooh. well, descriptions mm-hmm. descriptions maybe of injuries mi- do happen. Okay, so maybe mild, mild, mild 
story. Or my no, mild and off screen. Okay, yeah, mild and off screen. All right. Fun fact: Sounds I good. almost just typed All milk right. instead of mild because it's the same finger. All right. Uh, Pax forced combat. Um, it's moderate and off screen. Yes. 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 Yep. I'd say yeah, moderate and off screen because you know strategic time yeah. skipping and the okay. narrative. All right. Oh, could you hear that? Yep. Yeah. For for our listeners, because I have, I do not think I'll be able to edit that out without cutting everything like things I've said. I was just uh, gonna restate. Nah, it's fine. So Kohaku, okay. our uh, junior assistant editor, is attacking a mouse, um, but on top of and jumping around and over my beanbag chair. So that that sound was her claws uh-huh. doing a mad scrabble on the on the like vinyl surface or not vinyl the whatever that whatever thing is, is called that it's made out of. <laughs> Um, she, it's her, right. it's her favorite place uh, to Pax. play with, with a mouse by herself. All right. For Pax, magical brain surgery, the gratuity rating is, uh, severe. Yeah. Yeah. Because the whole, like, last it's section of the, the book is just, book. look how terrible this oh was. Gosh. So much. Uh, I would say that it's no. not torture porn, though. No, it's very, it's very um, narrative. But it's just, it's very it's emotional, m- but it's not, it's not pornographic. Mm-hmm. It's just a severe thing with severe implications and severe consequences and severe, yeah. Everything, yeah. All right. Then for the trauma of being integral, interchangeable, or irrelevant. For socks, I think it's pretty, it's either integral or interchangeable. I th- I feel like it was probably um, interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Like, he could have been heard in a different way for different reasons. It, yeah, like, it could have been her dealing with a different animal. Like, as far as plot goes, yeah. for that matter, it could have literally just been that, like, a horse was untrained and she had to figure out how to deal with, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, in terms of the impact on Pax's story. Yeah, in terms of, story, like, the actual... Because it is her story. Book. It's interchanged. Plot. It, th- right. there, I think there needed to be uh, something. I, like, she needs a horse, but it could have been an <laughs> well, untrained horse, not was, a traumatized horse. I'm thinking horse. even more just, like, narratively, she needed a reason to stay and have, like, the whole thing of what happened in that village to happen. And the horse oh, was right. the... But it didn't have to be right. because of like, the horse. Like, the horse was the hook. And th- they explicitly state that in the book. Like, the horse was the excuse... Mm-hmm. That they had for her to like have like the plot Keep happen, there. Um, but like mm-hmm. it it was an interchangeable plot device. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then for the magical brain Whoa. surgery, it is forced integral. Combat. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. The forced combat forced is combat integral. Is integral. Uh, because I would say either forced combat and magical brain surgery are integral, or they are both interchangeable, both. and you'd have to swap out. They both are both of them. integral, and I am yeah. only saying that. Because this is a major character development thing shift. for book yeah. three. Like this, this, yeah. it doesn't make. It would be a very different yeah, series. It, it doesn't make book three happen. But if book, if this hadn't happened, then book three would not have been the same thing. And it would not have been the same story. Yeah. Yeah. Care. So mm. in this, that's why I was saying in this book itself, it's interchangeable in the series as a yeah, whole. Yeah, like you integral. could have swapped out the last third of the book. But like, yeah, for something else. But yeah, why? but like, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have done anything positive, and it, yeah, um, yeah. Hair. This will be. This is interesting. I think. S- I think socks was treated with care. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost just. I ty- man, my typing is not doing so hot today. I almost just typed socks instead of yes. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, <laughs> forced combat. Yes. We actually kind yeah. of explicitly yeah, talk about that in our in our segment. Like this was treated with mm-hmm. an enormous amount of care, especially for something that is that is viscerally traumatizing as an event. This was yeah fine. I mean, if it if it were a TV show, this would have been the Gladiator yeah. episode, and we would have spent an entire episode just sitting on this. But here, there's there's time skips. Like we don't see every fight. We, we don't even see most. We don't fights. have a. We don't even see most fights. We don't have a blow by blow. Like there's so much done to make it be that we know what happened to her without. I'll, us I'll even go it. as far as to say like this entire segment was written with less graphic detail than her like newbie fight training scenes in book one. Oh yeah, like absolutely. It's, it's mostly horror yeah. by implication. Yeah, and it, and it's it's also. 
for the record, horror by magical implication. And mm-hmm. and so there so right. there's just a lot of There's a lot of psychological yeah. but there, horror. But there's, there's a lot of psychological horror couched in care. And yeah. It's it's treated with care. Full stop. Yeah. It's only psychological horror because she's her. We <laughs> yeah. are not her. So it'll be fine. <laughs> You're not fast. Um, you'll miss. No. <laughs> yeah. And you'll even thrive for not being Pax. Uh, point of no, wait. view. Brain um, surgery? No. Sorry, brain surgery. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, I'm not doing brain so surgery the typing. You're just trying trauma. to combine our, our, our topics. They just, they feel like That's... one giant thing because of how well, how much they yeah. flow into each other. Um, but was the trauma treated with it, care for the I think brain it was surgery? With enough. Yeah, that's what I was I don't think say. there's a way it could have been treated with more and still have been impactful and the same book. Um, I, I do want to kind of warn the listener, though I'm not going to get into detail, but we didn't go into like a lot of explicit things that she went through in the aftermath of this, but there, there are some pretty heavy column near misses on some pretty severe traumas. Because she's... Ex- because she's extremely vulnerable after the brain surgery, some people tried to take advantage yes. of that. And, and, and that's all uh, we're going to say about that. Uh, this is honestly one of those things where, like... Uh, look for anything th- else. This is this is honestly yeah. one of those things where I'm going to do something that I don't think we've done before on the podcast and basically say, like, hey, if you're thinking about reading these books and you actually want, like, spoilers in the form of content warnings for the books feel free to email us and just kind of say, hey, that thing that is that you didn't talk about, but is definitely in there. What is it? Um, I would I would actually recommend if you're not sure, like, look it up. It's not going to ruin your enjoyment of the book. If you're okay reading it, it might be better to know it exists. And um, it's it's not graphic, but it could be pretty painful. So yeah. And so that's all we're gonna say there. But also, um, but also, but yeah, it was treated anytime with you have questions about the as books, much email care us. As possible and still being a story. So mm-hmm. we're, it's yep. good, but, you know. Yes. All right. So point of view of the trauma for Socks, because Socks is a horse. The point of view is <laughs> Yeah, the, we don't get a horse point of view. This is not an anthropomorphized animal. We don't have talking animal like we did uh, in yeah in um we, we like we did for our cat and our dog yeah. and in our other series. Yep. Oh, I was thinking of uh, his dark materials, but <laughs> like anyway, we have in all um, of like the, yeah all of the other animals yeah. that we've talked Th- about. This is yeah. Yep. This one is an this actual one just All right. horse. <laughs> actual horse. Point of view of the uh, aftermath is also Pax, because a Sox is a yep. horse. Um, yep. Forced combat. Pax again. <laughs> yep. And then also... Well, okay, well, now here's, the, here's then, the weird part. The brain surgery is the aftermath. Not well, the brain Pax. surgery is the aftermath of the combat. Well, I would say that there is aftermath other than the brain There's surgery. There's like a less than a page of it. Are we just talking about that? Well, I mean, what I was going to say is for both of these topics, we have a little bit of Pax and a whole lot of everybody else worrying about it um, and talking about it. And so taking these two together, where maybe the brain surgery is the aftermath of the forced combat. Well, because, I mean, I... There was more than a page of aftermath on the forced combat like before, because they have a whole expedition in between. They have oh, a whole expedition in between where she's like slowly, she's slowly having changes true. in herself, and there's a lot of trying to figure out what's going on, and then finally they go ahead and do the brain surgery. Okay, so that aftermath, like we we really start having other people's perspectives after this forced combat. Mm-hmm. And then continuing on until after, until during and after the brain surgery, because we don't really get her perspective very much. Like we follow her a little bit. And then like the end of the book is just a bunch of people talking about when they did or did not see her afterward. A spoiler. I'm going to cut that. Rephrase that. (laughs) Okay. Sorry. Um, like towards the end of the book, there's a lot of other people discussing her. Um, and not having her perspective in the very end. All right, aspiring writer tip. Um, I keep I keep seeming to go I'd first. Do you have one for these? I've noticed that. Like, <laughs> oh, I let you do it. Oh, I okay. Don't have I just one. want to make sure um, that, that if you have one, you're saying it. Yeah. If oh. 
Well, this time I do. I was going to say that you can do, <sighs> usually they tell you show, not tell. With something like mm. this, tell, tell yeah. with a little bit of show. Yeah. Like, I, I've, yeah. That's, it, it is definitely a thing that, like, when to show and when to tell, like, there's good times for both. It's just that for, for descriptive imagery, showing is more, vis- is more visceral, more visual, but, like, sometimes <laughs> you don't want that. Some. Because, like, that isn't... None of these really bad things are the point (laughs) of the story. Yeah. Uh, Even though they're very Mm -hmm. important to it. And so backing off a little bit can be very helpful. Um, Favorite non-traumatic thing about the book? (sighs) I'm sorry, you had one? Normally we just have whatever one you said. That's true. Okay. Okay. If you had had a second one, you could say it. (laughs) Okay. All right. Uh... Maybe see if yours applies for book three. Uh, favorite non-traumatic thing about the book? What is yours? Um. Uh. Hmm. I mean, if you don't you go have first, one, I have to thank. Uh, uh, I I really liked the description of the Kuakon's garden, like forest thing. Like that was really cool, and the whole like she gives him a jewel, and she's like, "Next time your offering can be like an oat cake. It's fine." <laughs> oh, yeah. Pax uh, has no clue how much treasure is worth, and it's just like, uh, "Gem here." It's it's like the equivalent of like showing up with a flawless diamond, and you're just like, "Um, will this pay for my dinner?" <laughs> yes. Well. We can have an entire discussion about how a diamond will not pay for your dinner because of the diamond industry being terrible. Okay, okay, but, like third, uh, like hundred years ago, which, showing up with like a or, or sure, three hundred sure. years ago, showing up with a or bag gold, of salt, pirate and a gold and be coin. Like, Here, pirate gold coin. She's walking around with pirate gold coins and is like, "These are money shaped. Yes, <laughs> these are no, worth value. Maybe <laughs> can I have dinner? <laughs> these have value. Um, yeah. Okay, I've got mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've really. Uh, when I when I was a kid, I thought that this was sounded like a relaxing thing, and then I grew up and got older and actually took formal martial arts in a place that had a similar vibe. I really like the Grange training. <laughs> I like the descriptions. Mm-hmm. I like the atmosphere. I like the camaraderie. I like how I like the 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 clear demonstration of like trust among the people that work out and and work together all the time um yeah. also i think my favorite character in this book um is mal <laughs> i mm-hmm. i just like really i'm i'm a huge fan of this person as a character and he's super wholesome and really fun and really observant and just is nice and reliable and like i'm just a fan of how he's written and yeah it's i mean th- there's not a th- like there's a there's a good amount of like wholesome male representation in Elizabeth Moon's writing, especially in this series. Mm-hmm. But like Mal is just kind of that person that you can depend on in general. He's the Stannis of the book. Or Stannis. Stan Stammel. I'm so sorry. He's the he, Stammel of he, this book. He is. Um, but he's not he's not the same character as Stammel. He's not a repeat. But yeah, oh, no. he kinda does serve the same function no. as just being just this really cool, really aware, really nuanced person. And yeah. Yep. All right. I think that's it. Thank you for joining us this fortnight. And we will see and you I later. And I will, uh, if I can snap a photo of it, I will get a picture of Haku with her beanbag. And we can tell you so you guys can see what she likes to... She, she really does like... You'll probably, you'll have, probably seen have seen it. it already. Well, no. I'm saying we should wait until this episode goes up and oh, wait. put it up with the okay. episode. Okay. Sure. All right. All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. You can follow us on Twitter at Books That Burn, all one word. You can email us with questions, comments, or book recommendations at Books That Burn at Yahoo.com. Support us on Patreon.com slash Books That Burn. All patrons get access to our upcoming book list and receive a one time shout out. You can leave us an iTunes review. This helps people to find the show. And find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll be back in two weeks.